Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today I'm building a watch, which is thanks to DIY Watch Club. Now, if you're not familiar with them, they basically sell ready-to-build watch kits. And while I've done a few mod projects in the past, I've never built a watch from scratch. It's something that I've always wanted to do, though. In fact, really early in 2020, I was starting to plan on doing a build and filming it. I was either gonna buy a bunch of Seiko parts from eBay or buy a bunch of parts off Marinome for a Vostok and then build it together around March or April in 2020. But then the world went crazy and international shipping became extremely unpredictable. So I kind of put that on the back burner until I got contacted by DIY Watch Club not that long ago and they offered to send me a build kit to review. So since I was already interested, it seemed like a perfect opportunity. Now, in full disclosure, they let me pick out whatever I wanted to and send it to me, and they're not going to ask for any of this stuff back, hence that promotional tag at the very beginning. Now, I'm just going to dive into this, and we can chat about it as I go through it. So, let's first start off by getting the case ready. And one thing to note is that this is the Explorer case from DIY Watch Club. Now, when I first heard about DIY Watch Club, they only had a diver to pick from. And since then, they have expanded their collection. There were two models that I was really interested in, and one of them was their newer dress watch. And one of the things I thought was really interesting about it was that it had the option to upgrade to a Miyota 8315 movement, which is pretty similar to the 8215, but it comes with an extended 60 hour power reserve. Now, ultimately, I decided not to go with that watch because it only came with a mineral crystal. And this one, the Expedition, comes with Sapphire. Coincidentally, this is also the model that Dave got from them, and he did a build while live streaming. And if you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. Although I made sure to get a different dial just to make mine a little bit different. So check the movement just to make sure it's everything is flowing and it's going. Now by default, this is the dial that normally comes with this watch, and I think it's the same one that also comes on their diver. It's a nice looking dial, but they did give me an option to upgrade to a different one. So I went with this one over here, because it's a sandwich dial, and supposedly it also has better loom. Now if you're going to go for the sandwich dial, they have two different options. I think there's a black, and then there's a silver one. And one of the reasons I picked the silver one was not only because I liked it, but because Dave got the other one and I wanted to have something just a little bit different. Now, one thing I do like is the number of options that they have in order to pick from, in order to add and kind of customize the watch kit that you get. However, I would like to see more options when you're ordering the kit. Each kit seems to come with a default dial in hands, and I'd like the ability to pick some of the extras without having to add them on a la carte. Now, by default, this watch kit comes with silver hands. And while that might look good on the black dial, I thought it would now for a whole lot of contrast with the silver. So I asked them to send me a set of black PVD coated hands. And one nice thing is that they do give you two different sets. And I think that's just in case you screw up and bend the heck out of one of them. All right, so let's start off with the hour hand. Now, before you do that, you do need to advance the watch just enough so that the date will goes up by one. That way you can make sure that the hour hand is properly lined up which is exactly what I forgot to do here. And I screwed that up. See, when it comes to watch modding, I know just enough to be dangerous. And now I gotta pop this hand off and re-put it back on. And after you do get it reattached, you need to advance the date wheel just to check that it is lined up. After that, you move on to the minute hand with pretty much the same process. Now, one thing I like is that they give you all the tools you need in order to actually do one of these build projects. But one thing I don't like is that they don't necessarily give you all the tools you want. There's a few things missing that could make your life just a little bit easier, namely just Rodico, for example. 
as well as just this little cushion thing or a movement holder. I mean, little things like that that make this a whole lot easier are missing from this build. All right, it's time to put the second hand on, and the second hand can be the most frustrating part. Now I have options here. They're the silver hands that were the default with the kit, and then they're the black hands that they sent me extra. But I just happen to have this orange one laying around, and just to make it a little bit more mine, I think I'm gonna put that on for now. The thing is, if I don't like it, I can always take it off and change it later. That's kind of the beauty when it comes to modding. Luckily, the second hand doesn't need to be perfectly lined up with anything. As long as it goes in, it's all good. And the trick with some of this is, if you get frustrated, just stop and walk away. You don't want to brute force this. Now, remember what I said about the orange hand? Well, forget it. Uh, spent about 20 minutes trying to put it on, got frustrated, took about a 20 minute break, watched the videos again to make sure there wasn't something I was missing, came back, tried another 20 minutes, was getting frustrated. And before I gave up again, I just decided to try the black hand they sent me and got it on in the first try. So I'm gonna take that as a sign. And eventually I might try to put that orange hand on, but for the sake of the video, we're going with this just so we can move on with our lives. I already have the chapter ring plugged into the movement holder. So now we just gotta put it in the case. Yep. And the crown should just pop right in after that. Now, one last thing to do before we close this thing up, and that's that they actually gave me a custom rotor. Let's first get the rotary came with off. And it's probably really hard to see, but to say relative time on it. Just make sure it goes. Voila. And all that's left is getting the case back back on. And voila, the expedition. So this took a little bit longer than I was anticipating. So I'm gonna take a bit of a break, get some nice shots of the watch, and then come back and just kind of sum everything up. Now, as you can see, I have a different shirt on. So a lot more time has passed than I was originally planning. I wound up getting some good shots of the watch, and at that point it was pretty late. So I just decided to pick this up at another time. That, and I thought it'd be a good idea to actually get some wrist time with this before actually talking to you about it. So as for the watch itself, now, I think it's kind of hard to give you a detailed review of something that the whole point of is to customize. But let me give you some of my observations and I'll start by throwing up some specs on the screen. So first off, I do like it. It's a nice, simple, clean design and that upgraded silver dial isn't something that you see every day. It makes it a little dressy while still maintaining the overall casual feel of the piece. And in that way, it's a lot like the Seiko Dress KXs. Also, I definitely made the right choice going with the black hands over the silver, as they offer a lot more contrast, and I think they pair nicely with that black chapter ring. However, I think I would have preferred the orange second hand over the black, as it's a, a bit monochrome for my taste. So in the future, I might open it up and change it over, but for now, it's staying like it is. Although I think that's something DIY Watch Club should offer in the future. Not only more colors of hands, but the ability to customize your second hand, just to make the watch pop more. Loom is also pretty good, and even though it wasn't planned, I'm really happy with how this turned out, as it has this two-tone look with a blue dial and green hands. The case has a nice fit and finish with the drilled lugs. It kind of has this brush to a watch look, 
but still has a very narrow polished chamfered edge that runs down each side, which is there just to play with the light, as well as intersect with the polished bezel just to give it a more cohesive look. The crystal also looks good here. It is a flat sapphire, but it rises out nicely from that bezel, giving it almost a box look. Although it is worth pointing out that they could have gone with a completely flat crystal and reduced the overall thickness. And that's something you could also say about the exhibition case back on the rear. Although it doesn't really make sense to offer that custom rotor feature if it's not something you can actually see. So kind of a give or take there. Now, even though the NATO they gave me was really nice, I wound up wearing this on the default rubber strap, which is surprisingly good. The reason I did that is that that NATO, while it seems like a really nice quality, is really, really short. So I think if you have anything over a seven and a half inch wrist, you're not gonna be able to wear it. The other thing we gotta talk about is value, as in, is there any actually here? Now, if you total up everything they sent me, it's gonna cost you about $430. And that is before any discount codes as there are some floating out there. So I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second because I know some of you out there are thinking, you know, you gotta be nuts to spend that amount of money and get this in return. And you're not wrong about that, but there are a few things to consider. First off, if value is important, then modding is not the road you should go down period, end of sentence. And I'm not just talking about DIY watch club, but modding in general. The way I see it, modding is a big money and time sink. Very rarely do you get anything back even coming close to the monetary value you put in. Although I think for the true modders out there, that time sink thing is kind of the whole point behind modding, as I think they enjoy the design and the build part of this more than they actually enjoy wearing the watches they make. So the time spent and the experience they get is really what they're after and what they're willing to pay for. The other thing to think about is that that price also includes extra components and the tools to actually put this whole thing together. If you just want the components for the basic kit, I think it's more like 320 bucks, which on the surface might sound crazy, but I think it's rather reasonable as far as mod projects go. For a test, I went onto Crystal Times' website and priced out all the components you need to build an SKX, which came out to about 350 bucks. So remember, modding is not a cheap hobby, and it's something you really have to enjoy in order to really get into it. So overall, I like DIY Watch Club, and especially for those who are new to all this and have no idea where to start. Nothing DIY Watch Club is doing that you couldn't get from a variety of other sources, but here it's all in one convenient place and comes to you in one convenient package, which I think is great when you're first starting out, because that way you can just focus on learning how to build these watches. Then, after you're done, you can take the experience and the tools they gave you and go wherever you want to go with that. You don't necessarily have to go back to DIY Watch Club for your next project. So if you've been curious about getting into modding but had no idea where to start, or maybe you're looking for a gift for a friend who's a bit of a tinker, then DIY Watch Club is worth checking out. For me, I honestly did get a bit frustrated with this project and specifically trying to get that second hand on. But that's actually happened every time I try to put a second hand on, and that's nothing new. And in the end, I did have fun, and I did enjoy myself. And it is pretty rewarding getting something that you can actually see and wear on your wrist. There may be better watches out there, but this is one that I have a personal connection to now, and I know it inside and out. The biggest takeaway I think you should get from this video is that building a watch isn't really hard or overly complicated. It just takes a steady hand and a whole lot of patience. So don't be overly intimidated about all this. Anyway, it's about time I wrapped all this up and let me know down below what you think about DIY Watch Club, the Explorer Watch, or if you have a suggestion for a better way in terms of learning how to mod. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, you all know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.